a lot, a lot of people have been looking out for this moment in time. The .NET MAUI release candidate or RC has been released. That means GA is right around the corner. How to get started yourself? What does RC even mean? Let's find out in this video. So if you are a library maintainer or early adopter or, you know, just some other random people, um, then you want to check out .NET MAUI right now because the RC has been released. And what does RC release candidate, what does it even mean? Well, like in the very basics, at the very core, it means that all the APIs have been finalized. Unless something really weird happens, the APIs have been finalized. So um, you can rest assured that there will be no more breaking changes. Every API that is in there right now, you can use. So if you're a library maintainer, then you can start preparing your libraries to make them compatible with .NET MAUI. Hopefully you already started with that, but um, you know now is the time to do so because now the APIs are final and now um, you can be sure that we are no longer doing any funny stuff there and you don't have to keep updating your library every time. If you're an early adopter, also now is the time. We're still bug fixing, definitely. But um, again, the APIs have been finalized. So everything that you're going to play with right now might have a still a little bug that we're going to fix. Um, but for the rest, this should kind of like... Um, mirror what the actual quality is going to be of .NET MAUI whenever it reaches GA in only one month at the time of recording. So, oh my gosh, that is so um, surrealistic right now that we have worked for so long and now um, it's almost there for you to try out to launch and it will be absolutely amazing. But first, let's check out all the details about the release candidate. It's kind of getting boring at this point, but um, there is no release without David O. I think they changed something in the blog. It's now David O um, writing a blog post about this. So the release candidate ready for cross-platform app development. And um, we're excited to announce the availability because this also means um, that um, as with the other .NET release candidates, this version is supported by Microsoft. Um, so we can finally say, hey, go start building your production apps with this. So how cool is that? Um, personally, I would wait until until GA, but you can already like, it's not going to that you're going to create um, an app in one day, right? I mean, we're good, but it's not that good. Um, unless you're a 10 times developer, right? Um, but you can start preparing your production apps right now. And you can start releasing those if you want to. So get started today, you have to install Visual Studio uh, 2022 preview at the time, um, which is preview three, we just had a little update for that as well. And make sure in the installer, I've showed it in other videos, um, that you um, check the mobile workload. And then on the right side, there is the little checkbox for .NET MAUI. So make sure that you check that one. Um, to use it on a Mac, you still need to use the command line tooling. We have a little link right here. It will be down in the video description below as well. Um, support for .NET MAUI in Visual Studio 2022 for Mac will ship formally in a future release. Um, and I think there will be preview releases of Visual Studio 2022 for Mac. Those are out right now that have some kind of .NET MAUI support, but we are still working on that. The release candidate, all the release notes are on GitHub, um, but much more important, which I'm going to get to is the migration tip sheet, because for this release, the RC, we, this was the last moment that we could make breaking changes. And so we did. <laughs> so there is a couple of, uh, well, there is multiple breaking changes. And um, I'm going to go over you uh, with that in a little bit. So uh, make sure that you check out all the bits there. If you want to jumpstart your journey, there is the .NET podcasts app. I still I promised you to do a walkthrough through, through that code base. Um, I still need to record that. So if that's still something you're interested in, um, please let me know down in the comments, and I will be sure to work on that. Um, also, I am definitely working on multiple courses actually to get started with non and Maui development. So st stay tuned on this channel, um, hit that subscribe button so you will be notified automatically. Also a quick note about the examine support. So the examine support policy page, and um, that says it's still supported until two years after the initial release of a version, which is like the major version, right? So examine forms five is the major version that we're still um, putting out service releases for, but that was released in November of 2021. So there is still going to be support for examine forms until November, 2023. So that would give you a lot of time to um, go over to .NET MAUI and we're still supporting that. So so we're still making sure that that's compatible with the latest Android version, the latest iOS versions, et cetera, et cetera. Then David, and I'm not going to go over all of this, um, is going to describe what is in the .NET MAUI release candidate. Um, there is a lot of stuff in there. Of course, all the things that I've shown in the previous videos are in there um, and basically all the stuff that is in Xamarin Forms. So here you can see all kinds of layouts, all kinds of controls. Um, basically, how does this compare?
compared to Xamarin Forms. Everything um, that is in Xamarin Forms is in .NET MAUI, plus a couple of new things like the Blazor web view, the border, graphics view, menu bar, shadow, and window. So there's a couple of extra stuff here. Um, I have a lot of content on my channel already about the .NET MAUI stuff, so go check that out and read all of this yourself on how to get started with this um, yourself. He goes over like customizing controls, the new handler architecture, so no more custom renderers. You'll be very happy with that as this is going to be your first look into the code base. Um, so make sure to check this out. Now, I'm going to go over to the migration guide because that is much more important, um, I feel. So migrating to RC1, this lives on the .NET MAUI um, repository and um, on the wiki. I'll link to that in the show notes as well. Um, so there's a couple of things. And we have to take in a little moment of silence, I think, because the essentials name is essentially gone. Yes, I know, I know, it's sad, um, because kind of like I'm going to skip over this first part, I'm going to get to that, but here we have the namespace changes, so everything that was in Microsoft.Maui.Essentials is now broken up into like more descriptive namespaces, more logical places, so uh, we have the application model with the activity state and the app theme and all kinds of browsers and app info, um, we have application model of communication, so email, SMS, all that kind of stuff. Um, authentication, devices. So it's broken up into much more namespaces that are kind of like easier to discover, um, makes more sense to find the battery information um, in the Microsoft.Maui.Devices namespace. But, you know, there's nothing really linking to Essentials anymore right now. So these are just now um, APIs that we are using in .NET MAUI, basically. So also that has gone up in um, kind of like .NET MAUI. Um, now, the other thing here, right here at the top, is um, something that Brandon wrote, uh, because we also introduced in the latest preview, in the previous preview, I have to say right now, um, the MAUI Essentials um, interfaces. So you could register your interfaces with the implementation, or you could write your own implementation, if that's what you want. Um, but something has changed there as well. So before you had to do this, like builder services at Singleton iBrowser browser implementation. Um, but we changed that to be either browser.default or device display.current, um, kind of depending on the context, because for a browser, there isn't really a current browser, so that's kind of weird. Um, but for a device display, there is a current display. Uh, so this is the new way you need to register your dependencies for examining essentials, if that's what you want. Um, and also you can then um, still use it this way with like the browser.default.openasync if you don't want to use dependency injection. So that's kind of a change that you need to um, um, be aware of as well. Um, now, the other things, I've described it all the way down below here all under all these interfaces and things here. Um, so we have to remove now these Windows package references, else you will get a build error, um, and it's not needed anymore. The Windows app SDK has added some features so that we can remove these packages and they will be added automatically as part of .NET MAUI. And also for the Blazor web view, there is some stuff that you want to do. Um, but actually, I just want to show you that in code so that we have a little interactive part here as well, and you can see where it is in actually the templates, right? Um, and this is all if you have like existing projects. So if you have existing projects that you need to migrate, then you need to do this stuff. If you're just going to do file new done in Maui application, you don't need to worry about any of this. The templates have been updated to not have all this stuff or have all the stuff that is needed. Um, so then you should be good to go. Now, let's first look at this one. This is for the Blazor. So if you have a .NET MAUI Blazor application, um, you can see right here that this register Blazor uh, MAUI web view doesn't exist anymore here in the um, B B MAUI app builder. So we want to remove that one. And actually here, we can just change this one because here we did the builder.services.app Blazor web view, uh, which was kind of like duplicate, right? So we don't want to do that. And now in the builder.services, we have a add Maui Blazor web view. So that kind of like does all in one. So you can just remove that line from the builder, do the builder.services.add Maui Blazor web view, and you're good to go again. You can remove this um, I'm using here that's not used anymore. There we are, and we're all done. So now you can just start doing this, and your Blazor app should be good to go again. Now, if we switch over to a regular .NET Maui app, 
Um, you can here see that this item group is in here. So um, I'm in my CS prod right now. Um, so, you know, if you check out the source for your CS prod, we can see all the things here, all the target frameworks, all the yada, yada, yada. Um, and here you can see like this, this piece was in the templates before, right? So the version numbers here might uh, be different for you, but if we keep this in here and we start running, it's actually going to say like, hey, I can't uh, do this with the packages because now the built-in functionality is trying to get a newer package than the one that's mentioned in here. So it's just a world of pain and we don't need this anymore. So we can just boom, select these lines, take them out of there, and then you can just start running your regular .NET MAUI application as well. And that is all we have basically for the .NET MAUI RC1 update. Now, I've seen a lot of people already very happy with the RC1. A lot of people who said like, hey, now is the time that I'm going to look into this thing. So very welcome. Um, please join me in this channel and find all the wonderful content that I've already been preparing for this moment. Um, let me know if you need anything else down in the comments if you want to know more about Don and Maui. Like I already mentioned, courses are coming. Uh, there is a wonderful workshop by James Montemagno, which I'm going to turn into a video course as well. Um, Javier Suarez is doing great stuff um, in Spanish. So, you know, if you like your content in Spanish on YouTube, go check out his channel definitely as well. Um, one other thing, um, we also have, of course, the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit. So I've just released, um, before recording this video, uh, the packages for that. So that is compatible with RC1 as well. You should be able to find the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit with the latest bits. That is not an RC1 yet. We want to still add some bits there, but we released Preview 9 that is compatible with .NET MAUI RC1. Um, and also the C-sharp marker packages are now compatible with that as well. So you should be all good to go to check out .NET MAUI for yourself. Thank you so much for watching again one of my videos. Please click the like button so that this video will go out to more people and everyone can learn about .NET MAUI. Um, check if the subscribe button is lit up and if not, click the subscribe button so this wonderful content will come automatically to your feed. And before you go, please check out this playlist with all the .NET MAUI stuff that I've been telling you about. So there's a lot of content already here. Um, or check out this video if you want to um, compare with preview 14 and everything that is new here. And check out this button if you're subscribed already. See you next time.